more wacky TV news this week, this time coming from Japan, specifically Sharp. In 2018, Sharp TV was the number one TV brand in Japan above Sony and Panasonic. And then in 2019, filled with confidence, Sharp decided to go all 8K in its flagship to coincide with Japan's introduction of 8K broadcasting content on NHK. Unfortunately, that whole 8K flagship experiment did not go so well for Sharp. By the end of 2019, Sharp fell to number three behind Sony and Panasonic, and specifically, Sony and Panasonic's OLED products beat up Sharp's 8K products. The reason was Sony and Panasonic's OLED TVs outsold Sharp's 8K TVs. Now, why is this interesting? Well, this year, Samsung is doing something similar. In 2019, Samsung was the number one seller of TVs in the USA. This year, 2020, Samsung's deciding to go all 8K with its flagship. Should Samsung study Sharp's failed attempt at 8K in Japan as a harbinger for what's to come this year with its 8K flagship? Very interesting indeed. Let's dive into this case study. It is simply amazing the similarities between what Sharp did in 2019 and what Samsung plans to do this year with its flagship TVs. So quick background and some context. In 2018, Sharp was the number one brand competing with Sony and Panasonic and specifically in the flagship arena. It did very well. Filled with confidence, it decided, you know what? Let's push the edge of performance and get consumers excited about 8K. So in 2019, Sharp replaced its flagship lineup with 8K. Specifically, it's called the AX1 model. And the specs were actually pretty impressive. The 80-inch TV had 4,000 nits, 1,000 dimming zones, and looked pretty amazing from what I can gather. But here's the issue. That was the 80-inch TV. Its 60-inch TV, however, had only 96 dimming zones and 1,500 nits. Still respectable specs, but as a reminder, last year's TCL 6 series had 120 dimming zones. So, 96 dimming zones, it's gonna be hard to compete with an OLED in terms of deep blacks and shadow detail, right? And that's probably what happened. It's 60 inch is probably the most popular size in Japan. The Japanese are one of the few countries that love their smaller TVs, and that 60 inch TV is going head to head with a 55 inch or the 65 inch, right? That's the range. But here's the problem. And we talked about this in our 8K versus 4K video. And specifically, 60 inches for 8K, you will not enjoy any improvements. 85 inches, 80 inches, maybe even 75. Yeah, 8K will probably bring a little bit more to the table because the smaller pixels in a larger screen will make a difference. But 60 inches, the improvements from 8K is probably negligible. However, the 96 dimming zones is even more noticeable when going against OLED's perfect blacks. And that was Sharp's problem. Its volume seller sizes did not receive the awesome specs of its 80 inch size, which how many it's gonna sell of those, right? Would things have been different had Sharp's 8K 60 inch been better spec'd, better equipped, maybe? We'll probably never know because Sharp announced this year that it would go OLED as its flagship. Yes, Sharp has called it quits on 8K this year because of last year's disaster and announced that, you know what? We should have went OLED last year and now we're gonna try to play catch up with OLED this year. Okay, now does this story sound familiar? Because Samsung is doing something similar. In 2019, Samsung was the number one brand, right? And by volume, by sales, the QLED killed OLED, all these great things happening in 2019. And so this year, Samsung decided, what? Replace its flagship with 8K. And specifically, that would be the Q950 and the Q800. So the Q800 is new. Both of these 
will be 8K TVs and represent the flagship. And generally speaking, the 950 we saw at CES, pretty amazing, amazing, super thin, zero bezel with the speakers on the edges. It was pretty cool. And the Q800 is very similar to the Q90R last year in terms of form factor, right? It is most likely the Q90R form factor transformed into the Q800 with its one connect box, right? And that amazing light thin frame. Probably not quite as design friendly as the 950, but high end nonetheless. And that's your 8K flagship for 2020, the Q950 and the Q800. However, its 4K lined up has been somewhat left behind in terms of features and specs, but we'll talk about that later. Let's focus on the analogy of what Sharp did going 8K last year and losing to OLED and what Samsung is doing this year Pretty much the same thing, going all 8K in its flagship. The question is, will it beat OLED or maintain its dominance over OLED, unlike Sharp? So we'll start with the pricing. In Japan, Sharp's 8K TVs last year were up to 20% more expensive. That's pretty reasonable, right? And yet the Japanese didn't notice any improvements with the 8K or were not impressed with the 8K image. They still went OLED because they weren't willing to pay that 20% premium for an inferior picture quality. Let's talk about Samsung then. We know what we got with OLED, right? OLED images, pretty good, great motion handling, and awesome, awesome blacks, just not that bright. And I think this could be the difference here. For 2020, Samsung's Q950 at the 65 inch size is supposed to have close to 4,000 nits, allegedly, right? But 4,000 nits, that is significant, huge in fact. Will it make up for the difference with the absent deep blacks? The blacks are pretty good by the way, but is 4,000 nits and HDR performance enough to sway consumers? Well, that's first. Second is the price. We expect the Q950 to be more than 20% above the C10 from LG. So the LG C10, Prediction is if last year's prices are similar to this year with a $100 discount, MSRP C10 is probably going to be around $2,500, maybe $2,400 if we're lucky, but around that range. So 20% more puts it in the $3,000 range. I believe that at the $3,000 range, it's going to be more expensive. I think the Q950 will probably be a little bit above $3,000 and the Q800 will be closer to the OLED pricing. Okay, so the question becomes, will consumer choose either the Q800 at the same price or the Q950 at a little bit more for design friendly appearances, right? That is the true question. Without knowing the specs of the Q800, I'm going to assume that it's going to be similar to the Q950, just like last year, the Q80 specs were very similar to the Q90R. In terms of picture quality performance, the two were neck and neck. If this holds true for the Q800, Q950, we can start a comparison. Rather than assume that the C10 is that much better than the C9, we can give it a few benefits of the doubt. First, it will be a little bit brighter, more than likely. And yes, motion handling will be a little bit better because of the black frame insertion that's activated this year. And of course, HDMI 2.1 is now available on both TVs, so that's a wash. With the Q950, first, they will have significantly more brightness levels than the OLED's direct competitor, the Q90R last year. So the Q950 will be 4,000 nits, Q800, maybe close to 4,000, maybe 3,000, right? It's a little bit lower down the line, but still significantly brighter. And the black levels will be slightly improved because Samsung did add a new technical improvement, which is it redirects energy away from the LEDs that are in the dark areas and moves them to the LEDs or the backlighting. This is supposed to help with contrast a bit more, but at the end of the day, it does come down to price. And I'm going to use the Q800R here. I believe this is going to be their volume leader in terms of 8K versus OLED discussion. The 950, so much of that cost goes into design, that special frame, the speaker, it's very much cosmetic. The true competitor, to the C10 will be the Q800. So now comes the question, will the Q800 outsell the C10? 
I believe the answer is obviously no. Consumers, when faced with very similar picture quality, they'll choose the cheaper set. Even if the Q8800R is a little bit brighter, and more importantly, I didn't mention the 8K improvements here. At 65 inches, 8K is not better, noticeably better than 4K. Yes, I know the Samsung's argument that upscaling to 4K will make a huge difference. I will concede that at the 85 inch level, right? At the 85 inch level, you got more pixels per inch. Upscaling to more pixels per inch, assuming a good algorithm, sure, it could look better. But at 65 inches, I don't think so. I don't think it'll be a noticeable improvement. So pixel to pixel, not a big deal. Brightness to brightness, yes, noticeable. But then deep blacks, not as deep, maybe noticeable, maybe not. But is it close enough where consumers say, this is so good, I'm gonna pay an extra $500 for it? No, because this image by OLED is still very good. Does that mean that Samsung will follow sharp down this path of 8K failure? No, and this is why. Unlike Sharp, Samsung is going to market its 4K series as flagship as well, even though the true specs are not flagship. Its Q90R and Q80R 4K replacements will be marketed as flagship 4K. They will sell those a whole lot more than any of their 8K sets because Sharp did not have 4K flagship. It replaced its entire 8K flagship. Well, let me take a step back. It did not market any 4K flagship. Its flagships were marketed as 8K. On the other hand, Samsung will market its 4K as flagship, even though I panned it as, oh, they've abandoned the 4K, there is no 4K flagship. We're talking about specs. I am certain in the brochures, they will call the Q90R, Q80R flagships. The numbers don't bear it though. 96 dimming zones for a 4K TV is hardly flagship. It's easily beaten by a TCL 6 series at this point, right? The 6 series will have mini LEDs, thousands of dimming zones. Last year's TCL 6 series had over 100 dimming zones, but this doesn't matter to Samsung. Why? Because Samsung does not announce how many dimming zones each TV has. All it says is amazing brightness, amazing blacks, blah, 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 right? A lot of hyperbole. That sells their TVs. Now, what they do have improvements in this year is 20% brighter screens. So if we say the Q90R last year was close to 1500, 20% brighter brings it closer to 2000. That could be significant enough for consumers looking at an OLED and a Q90R that is either priced the same or a little bit cheaper. This is a little bit harder for consumers now. Unlike 8K, which is clearly more expensive, the Q90R this year can be priced cheaper than the OLED. Why is that? Because it's so much cheaper to make this year. Less specs, the panels made in China. The TV, the Q90R this year, will cost less to make, so they can price it lower, but then it will have better marketing, it may have a more polished appearance, it'll have better audio than the C10. Remember, the C10, its market position is the best image you can get with none of the fluff. So it's audio, the little stuff, it'll be shortchanged because people are getting it to own an OLED. But the Q90R, they will put the money into the cosmetics, into the audio. Samsung will make the Q90R and the Q80R look like a more polished TV than the C10 because packaging is everything, right? So when consumers walk into a Best Buy, seeing the C10 OLED close to the Q90 or the Q80R, from a distance without critical observation, the Q90R will be appearing like a more premium set because of the cosmetics. Obviously, if you put it through the rigmarole of the tests and the benchmark disc and all those things, sure, the Q90R is not gonna match up to the OLED, but Best Buy doesn't allow you to do that, nor does Costco, nor anywhere else. So consumers will only see whatever test disc or demo disc they have on display, which ends up making all the TVs look identical, right? 
So here's the problem that LG will face. They once again will be beaten based on marketing and pizzazz, nothing to do with picture quality. So unlike Sharp, Samsung will play this game a bit more intelligently. They will have 4K flagships that will be priced just below OLED. Unlike last year, where their flagship was priced actually above OLED, where the Q90R was a couple hundred dollars more than the equivalent OLED, this year the Q90R will be just a little bit less. And the 8K will definitely be more. This gives the consumer that choice of too expensive, too cheap, just right. Too expensive is 8K, Q70 is too cheap. This price is just right because it's just a couple hundred dollars below the C10, but it looks more premium. That, I believe, is going to work. Now, am I a Samsung booster? No, I am just studying what they did last year. How did they place the Q90R and the Q80R and the Q70R in such a way to sell so many of them. They promoted all their QLEDs as premium flagship, right? From the Q60 all the way up to the Q90. But what they probably did not expect was TCL, Hisense, the cheaper brands also saying we have QLED. So this year, QLED alone is not gonna be, oh, this is flagship. They have to up their game. And upping their game means special audio features, better cosmetic bezels maybe, all those little things that will set them apart as a flagship without having to pay more for a better picture quality that a true flagship should have. Well, that's my position on this. So what do you guys think? Is Samsung gonna follow sharp down this road of 8K despair? Or is 8K nothing more than a flagship diversion to elevate its appearance in the market when reality is the volume movers will be the Q90 and the Q80, both of which are cheaper TVs and when sold at volume will maintain Samsung's dominance. Well, the way I put it, you see where I'm going. I think this is a genius move by Samsung. I'm still pissed <laughs> that their 4K is not a true flagship, but it's beginning to come together I am seeing what Samsung is doing with their product strategy. And again, it's going to work. Until next time, stop the foaming.